All right, so you know about variables? Uh, kind of. Maybe go over them again. Sorry? Maybe go over them. Okay, a variable is where, so you know about the computer architecture. What things are you aware of with that? So you know we've got the monitor? Yes. And the key components inside the computer, you might be able to guess some of them if you just name things. You know about the computer you built one. So. Oh yeah, CPU, GPU. Yeah, CPU's really big. GPU's also really big, but we don't really think about in programming as much. What's the main one? Well, not the main one, but the one everyone talks about with computer speed. Yeah. And that's really big for programming. This is like, RAM and CPU is where it's at. So CPU is going to do everything. It's essentially just an automated calculator. But RAM is what um, allows you to create the systems that it goes through. So variables is just using RAM. And essentially, you tell the computer, this section of RAM I'm using to store this value, and it has this value. So for example, the code in Python x equals 10 is basically telling the computer um, that we're going to create a section of memory. So the section of memory is like, you've probably heard about memory being like a list, right? Yeah. And you have like your variable indexes and whatnot. Um, so if we say x equals 10, I'll create so this section, I'll tell it it's x, and then the data will be in here. That makes sense. Right. Okay. So variables is using memory to store stuff. Um, and that's where all the programming takes place. Do you know about, you heard about the constructs of programming? No. You've not heard about no. the constructs? This is everywhere, like it's so everywhere, it's kind of cliche at this point, but it's quite important. Uh, it's not the be all or the end all, but it's quite useful. So you've got what's called sequence, you've got um, branching, and you have, I'm having a mind blank, what else can you do? Oh, you can loop. We usually call it iteration. So let's create a quick program. Let's say, I have got board rubber. I'm going to steal some tissues. What? Uh, uh. Alright. Oh, you heard about algorithms too? Uh, sort of. Yeah, how would, how would you say you feel about algorithms, or what would you define as, or what experiences have you got with them, would you say? I've heard of them, I don't really know what they are. Okay. Algorithms are really simple. It's essentially, like I said, the way you want to think about CPU is, from a beginner's perspective, it's the brain of the computer, but very quickly, when you want to get good at programming, you want to think about it as an automated calculator. An algorithm is just a set of instructions that a CPU or a calculator could perform. So for example, let's say I want to do um, 10 plus 10, 20 plus 80, 9 plus 10. That would be an algorithm. So we're saying three calculations we want to do in a row. But this isn't a very useful algorithm because it does stuff, but it doesn't ever output it. So this happens inside the computer, but nothing gets sent to the monitor. So you probably know the command we use to, to make it go to the monitor. Uh, print. Yeah. So all we can do is shove print on top, and suddenly we've got ourselves a way more fancy algorithm. And this, if we did it in Python, would literally print out these things. Um, so that's algorithms. And essentially, these are the building blocks of algorithms. So if we had a problem, let's say we've got Jimmy, your boy Jimmy. And what kind of, you want to go into hacking, right? It was a sort of a joke, but yeah. Oh, it was a joke. Yeah, oh, a joke. joke. <laughs> Hacking's a genuine career. I know it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people go into it without any formal education in computer science, just by picking out people from nerds around school like me or whatever. Oh, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it's a future career then. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, it's more about if you've got a good work ethic and if you're able to make good business connections rather than anything else. But it does help if you've got formal education. So we've got Jimmy. Jimmy's got some maths homework. Because Jimmy is doing a, being a good boy doing his studies, but he's not that good a boy because he essentially got given the longest homework ever where he has a sheet of homework and he has how many problems? Let's say he's got seven problems. All right? And each problem, he's got a circle. And it's the exact same problem over and over. He has a radius. So maybe it's four for the first one, five for the second one, seven. And he has to find the area for each problem. Right? And Jimmy wants to cheat at his homework using programming. Instead of calculating each one by hand, shoving it into the calculator or calculating out, he wants to have an algorithm that will let him just solve all of them like, immediately. And we're going to design him an algorithm. Okay. And I like sort of trying to bounce off who I'm talking to. So I'm going to ask you about how you think you might do this. Using our constructs we have here. And I'll try and push in information where I can. Right there. So what, what, what things does the algorithm need to have? What characteristics to be able to do that? Um. I mean, I, I guess, first one you need to actually be able to get on the monitor, so print. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's solid. Um. And by the way, this is a hard problem. This isn't easy. But that's, that's why we're doing it. That's how you oh, get it. I've got no experience with it. Okay. Um, I don't know. I guess somehow, made like. Honestly, those sort of problems you, is an equation. So yeah. somehow you put the equation into the code. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Equation? Do you know the equation in this case? 
I've done maths in Yeah, <laughs> that's literally every program ever. Like, they'll be doing some algorithm, they'll be like, I know maths lets me do this, but they'll have to go search on Google what the algorithm oh, is. That's that's really fine. Year. If not, that's fine, it's really it's fine. Time, so, right? you go on Google and you search what's the area of a circle format. Yeah. So, a pop out area equals pi r squared, where pi equals approximately 3.14. Okay, great. So, that's our calculation, that's our equation, this is good. And these are both of one of these three. Every, pretty much anything in program we have one of these three fundamentally. Which one are you going to go for? I haven't explained them really, but their names kind of here and there explain what's going on. If we put this into the algorithm, let's say our algorithm's here, what would it look like? So it'd be like print, right? And then what might our equation be? Let's say we're just doing the first one. Radius 4. Yeah, so, pi. Yeah. 4 squared. And we use a variable to identify that times 4 squared. In Python squared, it's kind of a pain, so we'll just do times 4 times 4. Okay. Um, a lot of programming languages have it, but in Python it's like this. If you want to square x, it'd be like double star 2, but it brackets, it's not. And like mass, we can just shut it up top. Yeah. So that's our thing. If we did that, but we did the next one, say, um, and we can define pi up here. You, you know a variable assignment. What's that for? What's variable it? assignment. You might, you might have just seen it. So anytime you see variable identifier equals sign value, uh, that's variable assignment. Okay. And it looks like equals like maths, but it's very, very different. Essentially what it is, is it's saying put that in there in memory. Okay. Um, so here, we could use variable assignment to say what is pi. We can store in memory pi the value 3.14 so the program will work, for example. All right, pi times 5 times 5. And it'd be nice if we got some programming. We could do that. We could turn a computer on if you're interested. We can start doing some coding. It's probably the best way to learn. But then again, maybe I should go less detailed and more just everything. You said you had like the whole of break, right? right. Yeah. The whole. And if you're bored, just tell me and leave. That's, that's right. <laughs> so what, what are we doing? Are we, are we branching? Are we making a decision and switching based on that? Are we looping? Or are we doing things in an order that's set? Uh, I assume sequence, maybe. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And we call this algorithm design and analysis. And it's very important. So we've got sequence going on, that's really good. But what else are we doing? So we've, we're doing things in order. Pretty much any program is probably going to involve sequence. What else are we doing in this specific case? Because um, we're doing certain problems. Doing multiple sequences? I don't know. We could do that. You could literally write the code or seven times. Somehow be able to like input the value. Yeah. And then it just automatically works out. Yes. Do you know, uh, what's that called? Uh, that's called the procedural approach. It's very important. So essentially you can put things into a procedure, make it general, and then switch it for any input. We can do that. We'll definitely do that in a second. That's actually like another thing. It does kind of connect into that, kind of doesn't. Uh, we'll call, we call those sub-programs. We'll definitely look at that in a second. Um, but what else? Like, we've got loops here, sequence, and we've got branching or choice making. So if we're doing seven in a row, what might we want to do? Uh, loop it. Yes, loops. So what we can do is instead of writing the code seven times, we can loop seven times, right? And then we can also do your idea of let's put an input. So therefore we can use the same code repeatedly. So let's do all of those. Let's actually write the algorithm if you're interested. Or if there's somewhere else you want to go with it. Hi, Miss. Hiya. Um, if there's anywhere else you want to go, if there's anything you're particularly interested in, more, I'll just say. But if not, we can write the algorithm. Yeah. Let's go. And these are all your ideas, by the way. And that's kind of what you want in programming. You have to start thinking from yourself as soon as possible. Like, if you don't get anything else away from this, these constructs are already big, subprograms are already big. But the whole idea of the fact you can't really teach, you kind of have to figure it out, is a very important thing. All right, let's do the algorithm. So, first of all, we need the subprogram. Uh, I'm just going to tell you the standard in Python. This is just something you have to memorize. Use the keyword def. You've probably seen it a lot, right? Maybe. Maybe. Def? When you look for other people's codes or when you write code from online, they usually have it. No. Okay, fair enough. That means declare a subprogram. Subprograms can be procedures or functions. Heard that? No. Okay. And we can give it an identifier. What should we call it? We're finding an area of the circle. I guess just area. And this is an identifier. You can call it whatever you want. So this is a, this is a syntax thing. This is an identifier. And we want our input R. Yeah? And then either it can be a function or a procedure. If the procedure does something, if it's a function, it gives back something. So here we're going to return. 
and then we're going to do, um, we can use a squared, so pi times by r squared. Yeah, I can rub this out for now, and come back to it in a bit or whatever. And essentially what we've got here is what you were saying, the input, and then here's our output, and we can use that later on. So what we can do is we can do a, a loop, I should probably put the assertion there. Uh, wait for a selection. And loops. Okay. So then what we do is you have to just have to know, so there's two types of loops. Have you heard about the two types of loops? No. no, no. Okay. So the two types of loops are you've got a fixed loop or you've got a conditional loop. So a fixed loop might be do a star jump but then do it four times. So in which case you go star jump four times, or other times you'll say condition. So you might do, do star jumps until the end of the class. So you keep checking, is class over? And if not, you keep doing star jumps. Um, here we want a fixed loop because Jimmy has seven problems. So the syntax in Python for that, you've probably seen this if you haven't, I'd be surprised. This thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what we can do is we can uh, use our print, good old print, get things onto the monitor, and then uh, we can call the function. You're probably aware of calling functions, maybe? And we have to cast. Casting is a bit, a bit mad, but input. And we have bracket hell. This is a, a very common programming thing, having all the brackets. And that's it. Surprisingly short algorithm, to be honest. And that often happens in programming. When you're thinking about it, you're like, this is so much going on. And when you write it, it's like only three, four lines of code. Um, makes sense? Doesn't make sense? Sort of, I guess. If there's anything that doesn't, just like be like, Josh, this is stupid or something. <laughs> what do you think? Sort of makes sense. I mean, Obviously, I don't have much experience with this. So yeah. I well, I'm assuming no practice prior knowledge. No, no, no. Yeah. No. So the key things really we've looked at here is the different constructs and what they look like in practice. We haven't looked at selection, but it's not important. You can do a lot with just sequences and loops. Um, the other key thing that I need to talk about soon, I did, is data types. But you're probably more familiar with data types, and if you're not, that's fine. You ever heard of data types? Aware of them? What sort of things are they like? I might know the string them. floats. Integer, Boolean, char. Uh, the only one I recognize is that integer. Oh, oh, that integer. So essentially a data type is an information type. So when you get information in the real world, there's different types of that information. So one kind, you probably do this in psychology, right? Probably, yeah. Like one kind is like visual information. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or another one is like verbal communication. This is essentially the program equivalent. And it essentially tells the computer how to deal with something. So for example, 10, as in I have 10 cars, or 10 as in a kid, a, a someone actually called their name, their kid 10. Because you know people have dumb names these days and whatnot. Essentially these are different kinds of information. Here it's a name, but here it's an amount. And the computer needs to deal with those differently because they should behave differently. Um, there are five main data types, but Python only has four. I would stick to Python as well. It can get very confusing if you start doing program in general. I've done that a bit, but you need a bit of general program, but you can stick to Python. Well, Python is only four. Um, you've already said one, integer. Um, in Python, we have floats, um, which are a pain. <laughs> you can have like whole lectures. We could have spent this entire time talking about floats. Not a joke. That's what I did in <laughs> my study recently. Um, we're not going to do that though. Booleans. Probably heard of booleans, maybe, maybe not. And the last one, very famous, strings. Um, other programming languages have one more char, but Python doesn't, which is quite nice. It's quite a pain. Um, yeah. Have you heard of booleans? No? No, no, no. Okay, true. booleans only have two values. They're either true or false. And this might sound kind of useless, but it turns out in computer decision making, this is the key. The computer will either do something or not do something. There's no in between. And you use that construct to build everything else in the computer system. So when you have your AI making decisions about whether a face is of one person or another, um, it does not just look at the face and know. It has to make a bunch of decisions about it is this, it isn't that, it is this, it isn't that repeatedly to get to an output. All right, we've got two minutes left. So, um, yeah, I don't know if any of that would have gone in. I, I think you really do need to code to start getting it. Yeah, I'll try doing it in the holidays and stuff. Yeah, you heard of Snakeify? No, it's not. No, Snakeify, it gives you a bunch of problems. So you know like my problem with Jimmy? Oh, okay. It'll give you a bunch of that, and it starts really simple. So I'm guaranteeing you the first three problems, just from this talk that I've given, you'll be able to solve them. 
So you'll feel like, I am smart. You'll solve those and you'll move on, and it'll get harder and harder. But like they're really strong, and that's how I would get good at Python, I would say. Snakeify. Snakeify, yeah, yeah. And if you have any questions about anything, just like just like shout at me over the internet. I like I love talking about this stuff and whatnot. And yeah, thank you on YouTube. Let me know in the comments section. Um, can you see me? Maybe. <laughs> Let me know if this made any sense or not. And if it didn't, leave me a comment or join my Discord one. Am I in frame? <laughs> no, your head's cool. Hello. No, you are. Please subscribe to Cool Computer Scientist and to youtube.com slash Um See you in a bit. Bye. Very nice.